All right, so welcome back. Dr. Kimberly Orr is here answering all of your eye health and eye care questions. Dr. Orr, we're getting so many questions just rolling in here. Uh, someone said, can bad glasses make you dizzy? So if it's a bad prescription, if it is not made right, or if it's not the prescription that you need, they definitely can make you dizzy. So you wanna make sure that you have the right prescription and made well. Okay, uh, and this next question is pretty interesting. Someone said, when should you switch from readers to prescription glasses? So it really just kind of depends on the person. Um, everybody can have a little bit of a prescription that could actually benefit from having a prescription pair of glasses versus over-the-counter readers. Very few people just fit into the, all you need is the over-the-counter readers box. So uh, definitely get your eyes checked from an eye care professional and see if there's a prescription that could help you out. All right, so this next question I can relate to because I've been guilty of doing this, falling asleep in my contacts. Someone says, is it a bad idea to sleep with contacts still in? And then my question for you is, what are the consequences of doing that? Right, that's a great question. It's definitely not a good idea to sleep in the contact lenses because it can increase your risk for an eye infection, especially corneal ulcers, bacterial infections. So it's always important to take out those contact lenses before you go to bed, if you're in daily contact lenses, make sure that you throw them away. And if you're in a lens that you can reuse, make sure that you're cleaning it properly. Um, there are some lenses that are approved for overnight wear, but even with those, I tell patients the best thing to do is to take them out every night. Alrighty, so I'm gonna combine two questions that just came in. Someone said, if there's glaucoma in my family, should I be concerned? And then someone also asked, what are some ways to avoid glaucoma? Right, so um, there's definitely a genetic correlation with glaucoma. Um, so if you do have that family history, you wanna make sure that you're getting that checked out. That does not mean that you have glaucoma or you're destined to glaucoma, it's just in your family history and there's that extra risk that you have. Um, the best thing that you can do to prevent glaucoma is to go in once a year for your annual eye exams and make sure that you're getting tested if you need it so that you can get treatment early. And speaking about those eye exams, someone asked, uh, when is the earliest you should get your child an eye examination? Mm -hmm. So that's always a fun question because we do a um, eye exam through infancy, which is an organization from the AOA that covers an eye exam from six months to a year. At those eye exams, we're really just looking for big things like eye turns or really strong prescriptions. Um, after that, I usually say before kindergarten, so around three or four, so you can make sure that their eyes are healthy and that their vision is clear for school. Great, great. So someone just asked, I have photosensitivity that has gotten worse over time. What is best for this glare that happens even on cloudy days? Yeah, so some people will have glasses that have a tint in them, just a small tint all the time to really help with that light sensitivity. But it's important to make sure that that light sensitivity isn't coming from something else like dry eye or allergies where the eyes themselves are just irritated and therefore more sensitive to the light. Um, going back to the sunglasses that we were talking about earlier, uh, what are some common mistakes people make when it comes to purchasing sunglasses? That's a great question. Um, and I think the most common mistake would be just not really making sure that they're protecting the eyes appropriately and looking to make sure that they have the right um, level of protection. And if they want that polarization, not making sure that it has that. Great. Uh, so, you know, this is a question a lot of folks might have when traveling into work. Someone asked, when driving in the early morning and the sun is rotating in and out of the trees on the road, why are my eyes so sensitive to light and dark? Yeah, and it, some people are just really a lot more sensitive to sunlight than others. And so definitely have that conversation with your eye care provider on some things that can be done for you with your prescription, maybe sunglasses, um, tints in the glasses, things along those lines that can make it more comfortable. Great, so Dr. Orr, earlier we were talking about eyes and allergies. Someone said, this time of year, how do I tell if I have pink eye versus allergies? That's a really good question. So usually allergies, and this isn't always the case, but usually it's going to affect both eyes, where if it's just one eye that's really red 
watery and weepy, it may be pink eye, especially if you just got over a cold or a sickness because everything's really connected right there. So they can travel from the sinuses to the eye. So if those things match up, it may be more pink eye. If it's both eyes and there's a lot of the itching right there in the corners, it's probably allergies. And we have time for just one more question. You know, what do you want our viewers at home to really take home with them with this interview when it comes to eye health, when it comes to summertime, when it comes to allergies, what do you want them to take home with them? Yeah, I want them to take home uh, to look for 100% um, UVA and UVB protection and polarization in your sunglasses, um, to go get your eyes checked once a year from an eye care provider, whether that be an optometrist or an ophthalmologist, make sure you're getting those eyes checked out. Um, and with allergies, make sure that um, you're using a good quality artificial tear, either refresh or sustain, or some over-the-counter antihistamine like a Pataday is a good brand, or Lastacaft, Aloe, Zatator. There's some really good options that you can get over-the-counter. And if you're ever concerned about your eyes at all, don't hesitate to reach out to your eye doctor. I'm sure they'll be happy to see you and talk with you about your options. Thank you so much, Dr. Orr. We certainly learned a lot today. And if you miss any of today's segment, just head over to our website, WFNYNews2.com. News 2 at 6 is next.